let's talk about the Azura High prophecy from the books. Just follow me for a bit because I'm leading you to my theory for the next few episodes. The prince that was promised, or was it the princess that was promised? The prophecy states there was a warrior that saved the world a long time ago, that he will be reincarnated to save the world again. The books state that Azura High was born under the bleeding star from smoke and salt. Sounds familiar? Azura High has never been mentioned on the TV show, but Melisandre and other characters have mentioned the prince that was promised repeatedly throughout the series. In the books, Nissa Nissa was Azura High's wife, whom he had to kill in order to forge his sword, Lightbringer. Now, I mention Azura High because the prophecy is in direct correlation to the Lord of Light, who is apparently very real and very powerful as we have witnessed. We have seen many priestesses and priests who represent the Lord of Light throughout the seasons. Thoros of Mir, although a degenerate drunk, resurrected Beric Dondarrion from the dead multiple times. Beric Dondarrion is able to light his sword on fire similar to Azor High, thanks to the power of the Lord of Light. Now, the Red Priestess Melisandre had a scene with Lord Varys, if you can remember. I want to say it was during season 7 at Dragonstone. Uh, the Red Priestess told Varys she would be leaving and going to Volantis. Varys, very sarcastically as he does, tells her it's a good decision to go and never to come back. Melisandre promptly snaps back by telling Varys in a very cryptic way she will return to Westeros one last time and they both will die at some point upon her return during the Great War. I'm sure Varys did not know how to receive that information that he will indeed die during the Great War for the Long Night. Now, just to give some perspective, Volantis is part of the land far east of Westeros, you know, where Bravos and all those other places are. Volantis is at almost the most southern point marked with the yellow flag that you see there. The Temple of the Lord of Light is in Volantis, where Melisandre is headed, and she is headed there, in my opinion, with a huge purpose, and also looking to absolve herself of some of her fatal mistakes she has made throughout the seasons. Uh, but let's go back a little bit further. During Season 6, the High Priestess of the Red Temple, aka the Temple of the Lord of Light, in Volantis made an appearance and her name was Kinvara. She spoke to Tyrion and Varys while they were in charge of Marine during Daenerys' absence. Varys once again stated, or once again in his sarcastic fashion began to question the Lord of Light's ability. Kinvara then gives him detailed information from his past no one else could have possibly known by his castration. The look on his face is pure horror more power on display by the Lord of Light. Now in the books, the fiery hands are literally the soldiers of the Lord of Light. The White Walkers and Whites can only be killed by Valerian Steel, Dragonglass, and you guessed it, we all know, fire. Imagine Beric Dondarrion times a hundred, if not more, and possibly more powerful. I believe Melisandre will return to Westeros with an army of fiery hands courtesy of the Lord of Light. I believe this will happen in episode three or the next couple of episodes. Can't imagine after all these scenes we have seen involving the Lord of Light that he and his followers will not have a significant role in the fight against the Long Night. Let me know what you think of this theory. Um, the links to the scenes where I reference Varys interacting with Melisandre and Kinvara will be linked within my YouTube video. Uh, as always, thanks for watching folks. Alexa gets ready for episode three. Um, it's going to make history as the largest battle to be seen on television, and I can't wait. Thank you again.